Please welcome to the stage, Doug Stanhope. Thank you very much. Thank you. How is everyone tonight? First of all, I'm normally a lot funnier when I'm kind of pissed. And that's why I decided to tape my album in Reno, because it helps. You know, because you tend to get pissed when you've blown 400 bucks in an hour and only to pay four dollars for a pack of cigarettes in a fucking gift shop that you can't even smoke in the fucking showroom. It makes you a little edgy. This is the only 300 square feet in this entire state you can't smoke. And it's where I work. In Los Angeles, there's no such thing as a smoking section in a restaurant as it is. Take them off the fucking market. You know, make them completely illegal. If they're that bad for you. I mean, if, if I couldn't buy them, I'm not that much of an addict that I'd roll up grass and newspapers and smoke it. I would quit at that point. But don't make me look like a dickhead in the meanwhile for trying, you know, changing the rules every three days. Oh, it's after March 16th. They have to go to the smoking section. Okay, I'm the smoking section. Oh, wait, after January 4th. They have to go to the bar. Okay, I'm at the bar. Oh, no, now it's after May 7th. Now you have to stand outside and stare at your friends through the window where you're cold and alone, it's raining. Oh, now it's after September 29th. Now you have to hop on one foot while people spit at you and chuck rocks at you. Take them off. The I took the Amtrak. Has anyone ever traveled by Amtrak? Yeah. Could you smoke on the train you were on? Because yeah. most of them you can't. Now, I went to Boston to Seattle, which is three and a half days each way round trip. So I called ahead to make sure I can smoke on the train. They go, yeah, there's a smoking section on that train. Get on that fucking train, there's a smoking section. It's like three seats in the back of a cattle car for you to smoke in. There's a thousand people wedged into it trying to smoke. Hi, where you going? Auschwitz. Yeah, me too, I think. So I went in the bathroom to smoke. I smoked a cigarette in the bathroom. The Amtrak lady comes unglued. She's wailing on the door. Are you smoking in the bathroom? Yeah. She goes, people are complaining. I'm pretty sure I'm alone in here. I didn't check into the seat or anything. She goes, no, when you smoke in the bathroom on the train, it blows up through the vents into the coach cabins and people are complaining about the smell. It's a good thing I'm only smoking in here, not taking a big Stanley steamer, for God's sakes. What kind of idiot built this train? All I know is the guy sitting next to me hasn't stopped eating since he got on board. I see his fat ass heading for the bathroom. I'm smoking a fucking road flare, lady. I don't want that blowing up around my seat. It's such a worthless party. You know what I mean? It's, for all the addictions that are possible, and I have a lot of them, yeah, tobacco, is, it just serves no good at all. It just makes me not want to kill all the fucking old, slow people wandering around the fucking aisles here like they have no place to go. I can just, and they don't even walk in a straight line. They just wander, you know, at the one mile an hour, fucking holding hands with their fans, like just fucking hands across America. Get the fuck out of the way, you know? You gotta put hockey helmets on so they can bounce off the walls easier, you fucking idiots. It's better drug. To make tobacco illegal and legalize some hallucinogen, you know, something worthwhile. Ever do a drug called ecstasy? Oh. What? You got a story for me? Give me a story. It's not a good drug to do alone. <laughs> no, I found out the hard way. I was, I was in Anchorage, Alaska, and I was working up there, so I didn't know a soul. And uh, the bartender gave me this for my birthday present. He said, try this. I said, what is it? He said, well, Doug, it's illegal. So I did it. And he goes, uh, he goes yeah, and it makes you really horny. What, you rotten son of a bitch? What'd you do that to me? I don't need to be any more horny. I got horny down pat, man. I, I don't need narcotics to enhance it. This is my birthday present, too. Thanks a lot. You would have bought Anne Frank a drum set, you psychotic. This is the last thing in the world I need. I mean, it's Alaska. It's, it's like eight guys to every woman as it is. I, I, I did shit to myself that night I've never done to a woman. I'm not kidding, either. Uh, the maid came in the next morning. My whole room soaked down in cooking oil. And there's a porno going. There's a melon with a hole drilled in it. What do you use that for? I had a little luau. Fuck. You've done that, huh? 
right. You know, the first time I told that story, I swear to God, it was in Minneapolis, and a guy came up to me after the show, and he goes, Hey, you're the melon guy. I thought I was the only one who ever did that. <laughs> and I didn't want to break his heart, you know? The guy was, like, beaming with pride that he finally found someone to identify his produce fetish with, you know? I didn't want to tell him it was just a joke. I was just wanted to get the hell out of there before the conversation escalated, you know? Hey, what's your favorite kind of melon? Melon, man. What's your biggest melon you ever fucked? Let's head down the farmer's market right now and leave these chicks wanting more. <laughs> There's a lot of people I want to tag on this album. Hertz rent the car. You know, I was trying to write a big fuck Hertz rent the car bit because I got jizzed. I was working in Minneapolis and I had a. Uh, you know, I went, I reserved a, a car. Well, what happened? I have like this, uh, I fucked up all my credit. That's how the whole story starts. Is when I was 20 years old, I got a Visa card and I jacked it up to like $4,200 and just moved and I've never, never paid him a dime. So now it's like 10 years later and so I got to get one of these like secured parole visa cards where you get like 500 bucks paid up front and then you have to you meet with a visa agent every week to explain why you spend any money and you know so it sucks so I had it all like racked up which is you know one you know phone sex call it's max so I called Hertz rent the car to rent this car I said listen I don't I want to pay cash uh, I don't have enough room. They go, oh, it's okay. They never run the car. Just go down there and pay them cash when you return it. So I show up a $30 cab ride later, and they go, oh, your card won't hold this. I go, I know. I called, and they said, this. sorry, but I talked to the reservation. Sorry, but I spent 30 fucking dollars. Sorry. So I wanted to write a big fuck hurts rent the car bit to get him back. But, you know, do you think that? Because you think I'm a comic. I can go, you know, I get jizzed on a deal like that. I can go rag their business out on stage and it'll ruin their business. Oh, no one gives a fuck, though. You don't care that I can't pay my bills. I have shitty credit. I can't get a car from her. So from now on, every time I get jizzed by a business, I'm just lying on stage. I don't care. I'm just making up huge... Uh, Hertz rent a car. I, I reserved a subcompact from them, and you know what happened? They raped my children, ladies and gentlemen. Hertz rent a car raped my babies. You know it's bullshit, but if I say baby rapist and Hertz in the same sentence over and over enough, you'll go to Alamo. <laughs> by the time you realize it's bullshit, you already have the Alamo car. <laughs> truck drivers, anyone drive truck in here? You, everybody has? No, I think you're the only one who has, you fucking road-clogging, blood clot in the artery of the highways of you fucking think you own the road. You, I hope every one of you dies a miserable, like Ebola virus death, where you bleed out of your eyes, all your guts liquefy and shoot out your ass, you fucking... I mean, you do 42 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone, but then shitbag number two, he can do 42 and a half, so he swings it on out. Now they're neck and neck, and the race is on, and, and just as he's about to pass, shitbag number one spills his coffee all over his porno magazine, jacks it up a notch, and neck and neck. This one's hallucinating from 36 hours on truck stop speed. Who do you get behind, dude? Do you get behind the one blowing black smoke down your lungs, or, or the one slinging liquid pig shit out of the back of his rig? all over your windshield. I don't know. I have tapes of the Reginald Denny beating. That truck driver in the LA riots, I have videotape that I beat off to, ladies and gentlemen. I try to time it right when I come, right while he's getting hit in the head with a brick. You miserable. I, maybe I just... Uh... It's hard enough. I don't know if you've ever driven across this state. It's hard enough at 90 miles an hour, much less 42 and a half. God forbid they should put a few radio stations anywhere between here and Salt Lake City, for God's sake. You hit your scan button, it's like playing roulette without the ball. It just spins and spins. You get a choice of static or national public radio. Let me flip a fucking coin. Oh. You're now listening to national public radio. We'll now go live to Liechtenstein for a, a concert from a cafe where Jans Czarska Hanovana Vanovanovitz is playing a dulcimer strung only with scrotum hair. <laughs> this is National Public Radio. Don't fall asleep at the wheel.
I blew a speaker in my car today. That sucked. Yeah, he was a motivational speaker. Uh, left a bad taste in my mouth, but I feel a lot more positive. It's the weirdest thing. I am. Uh, oh, my gracious. No, I just found out I'm gay a few weeks ago in Oklahoma. That's uh, Because I had no idea. Some guy in a bar told me. Oh, you're a faggot. Ah, oh, shit. How am I going to tell my dad? Starting up breaking it to him, I was an asshole. He's going to hate this. I got shit from a guy in Oklahoma for wearing an earring. You know, what are you, queer or something? You got women's jewelry in you, some kind of homo. Everybody in the world has an earring now. I know a guy who has his lip pierced. He has his schmeckle pierced, and he runs a chain in between them. I can jerk off just talking too much, but I'm the freak for wearing an earring. I was going to get my dick pierced, but I figured, hey, it stings enough when I pee. You know what I'm saying? You been there? Oh, sure, we all have. I, I have two friends now who have actually gone through with that and had their lunch pierced like that. And, and they tell you it's supposed to enhance the sexual act somehow. Which is bullshit, because if it did, they'd sell clip-ons, you'd figure. You know, sell them in a toilet for 75 cents in a machine or something. I mean, it would turn me on. If a girl had herself pierced down there, that would turn me on. But not because she had a ring down there, just the mere fact. If she's going to do that to herself, shit, she's going to let me do just about anything, you know? She's not going to be whining about taking it in the ass if she has a big hunk of metal in her snatch. I mean, am I wrong? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting some of that anger up. And maybe a few of the old people, too. <laughs> That's the thing. You know, last time I worked here, they had the convention of World War II vets here. This week, they had the senior bowlers here. And you know, it's not even the old people, it's the management that gets upset thinking the old people are going to get upset. Hey, don't do all that uh, filthy stuff. Don't do all your blowjob jokes. We got old people here. Like my generation invented the blowjob. Old people would have no idea what I'm talking about. Why in our day we only had sex to keep warm? I know exactly what I'm talking about. Old people are crafty, man. They, see, they just use that shit. They play on your sympathies with the old. They know exactly what they're doing, though. Like all these old pricks at the poker table who suck me dry for about $700 this week. All acting like they're old. They're bluffing me in all the way to the end. Acting like they don't have shit. And they can't see their cards because of the cataracts. And then I, oh, well, I have a full house there. I thought I only had a three. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Because I used to do, like, fraud, boiler room, telemarketing. You know, the hardcore stuff you see busted on 2020 and 60 Minutes all the time. And I used to do that. And I would watch. Every time they'd have some TV show where they busted a phone room, they would always get an old couple on there going, Oh, they took advantage of us because we're old. Hey, wait, how is that an excuse, you know? How come every time I get into an argument with an old person, that's the first thing they throw in your face is their defense, you know? You don't know nothing. When you've been around as long as I've been around, you come talk to me, but till then you keep your mouth shut, whippersnapper. Until they get fucked, it's a different story all of a sudden. You know? yeah, they took advantage of us because we're old. They told us we want a brand new Mercedes and all we'd have to do is leave 8000 dollars in a brown paper sack in a locker at the bus station. Oh, we were skeptical at first because we've been burned like this 11 or 12 times before, but we're so old. No, you're dumb as a stick, lady. It's nothing to do with your age. I don't mind old people. Yeah, I would much rather work for a room with like 72 year old people than a room full of college kids. I would. What, you go to college? How old are you? 21. 21, as far as we know. <laughs> Don't worry, as long as you're gambling, they'll take any fucking idea you give them in this place. 
you're chucking bucks into a machine out there. You could give them a Kansas City Rotary Club bingo membership card, a picture of an 85-year-old black guy on it. They'd let you give you the seniors discount, too. In general, college, because I got on the college circuit, and work it, I don't mind when college kids come to me, but when you go to work at college, it's always like, you know, in a, like a cafeteria or a rec room at 5.30 at night, and there's, you know, the only kids who show up are the geek acts who are too stupid to get a fake ID, or, or the ones who'd rather not go to the kegger, you know, that think it's wrong to watch some frat pledge drink himself into a coma, drinking beer out of an enema bag, you know? <laughs> And you get such, like, hardcore political correctness out of these fucking douchebags with no life experience to back it up, you know? The old people, at least, if they don't identify, they at least have something in common with what I'm saying. College kids are just sitting there with a fucking blank picket sign and a magic marker in the back of the room waiting for you to say the wrong thing so they can, you know, I have nothing to say to an 18-year-old kid. I, I'm at an age where I'm 30 now. The difference, I know it's not old, but an 18 year old kid, his biggest fear in life is getting caught beating off, you know? My age, I don't even want to beat off unless someone's watching. I'm not going to say to them. I never get laid in colleges. That's why I hate them. <laughs> so you'll laugh. You'll laugh the whole time. Then I'll walk out there and you'll go, <laughs> Don't worry. It'll come around. One day you'll be like 60 years old. You won't be so beautiful anymore, all pretty and perky like that. You'll be like with a big house coat on and goiters and a hunchback, shuffling down the street, milky eyes from glaucoma. And Liver spots, bed sore, you're shuffling orthopedic shoes. You'll have a big old colostomy bag slapped on the side of you. Wiggly teeth from pyrrhea. Ooh, wiggle my teeth. Oh, yeah. Oh, then you'll fuck me. <laughs> you betcha. You'll fuck me, but good, Missy. <laughs> I'll see you then. I don't, I don't know if you guys gamble at all. I play seven card study. I, I've lost like 260 bucks so far, but I don't really mind because I know why I lost. I know the rules for seven card study. I've, I've played enough now. I just suck at it, you know? I just, oh, this is a terrible hand. I should fold, I should fold, I should raise you, you know? And I go, oh, fuck, I lost again. What happened? Uh, but what happens, because I like playing poker, but in casinos, because I get roped into like buddy poker games on the road where people have poker games at their house. Hey, after your show, come over to Pete's trailer. We're going to have a poker game. we got some Meister Bros. And I show up at these poker games, and there's no poker I've ever heard of in my life. They make this shit up in their office. Oh, this one's Walla Walla nine card, no peaky, high Chicago baseball, black Mariah's played on a tarot deck, the hermit and the hangman are wild. I'm sitting there with a poker face like Fred Goldman here and not guilty. What? What did you say? Is it, do I have a full house here or is there an older dark haired woman plotting against me? Uh, am I going to travel by sea? What do I have? Why didn't you just take me in the parking lot? and kick the shit out of me and take my money because that way I'd have more self-respect, you know? And if you're going to gamble, gamble in a casino. You know, I don't care if it's here or Vegas, Atlantic City, Monte Carlo, it doesn't matter. Don't take it out at beach trailer poker night. Don't do it half an hour a day at the fucking 7-Elevens in California either. You, I'm in L.A. 25 minutes for a pack of cigarettes. Six people behind some fucking gambling addict. I want a Powerball and the, the Fantasy Five and the Pick Three and the Kino and the Lotto. Scratch tickets. I want the cat in the hat and the ace in the hole. Two dollars. Let it ride. And I appreciate it. Everyone's so passive in California, but there comes a time in everyone's life you're just gonna scream hey you fat cunt this isn't the indian casino you want to blow your red check go chuck dice with the crackheads in the alley i need a pack of cigarettes here i'm not saying everyone should be that rude but break up the monotony it's no fun to be nice it's like you know being in new york and being rude it's no fun it's monotonous you know being rude in New York is like being in Thailand and being able to spit a ping pong ball with your pussy. So what? So can she, she can do it, they can all do it. It's no longer a talent.
You know what I'm saying? You ever been to Thailand? I haven't. Your son has? I have yet to go. I will go with a notebook. I've been to Okinawa. Anyone been to Okinawa? We were doing tours for the military over there, doing comedy. And uh, right off Kadena Air Force Base in Okinawa, they had this thing, uh, the banana show, this banana lady. <laughs> what she does, it's this little tiny bar right, off the, right outside the gates, and she starts out, she takes a stack of quarters on top of a beer bottle, and she will squat down over the bottle, pick up just the quarters without using her hands, and spit them a few at a time into an ashtray. It's hysterical. And that's just her opener. And it kills. And, uh, and then she takes a banana and she peels it. So you know it's not a trick banana. And, uh, and she pops it up the old fruit bowl there and she bites it off into pieces in front of you. And she doesn't do it in any sexy way at all. It's, which is good, because it's not erotic in the least. Uh, unless you get turned on watching a dog take a dump. This is not anything. And apparently she's aware of this, because she's, she's selling it like she's some wacky pitch man on late night TV, selling food processors and something. She's going, I, I, I! It's hysterical. Like she's a fucking Benny Hanna or something. And I'm watching it. And, uh, and then she finally she'll get a, a volunteer out of the audience and you come up and, and you lay on your back and she will stand over the volunteer and drop a piece of banana into your mouth without hitting a tooth. No, this was all explained to me before because my brother was there in the Marine Corps in 85 and he ate the banana. So when I showed up, I was legacy. So I go down to eat the banana and it was just like he explained it to me. It was all, you know, the quarters, the, the banana. And it got to the part where she's looking for a volunteer. And I'm all excited. I'm, I'm screaming, oh, pick me over here. I'm the guy, I'm the guy. I'm the only guy in the whole place willing to eat the banana. And I don't know why I thought there'd be a long line of people trying to eat a banana out of an old woman's pussy. But I'm screaming like I'm Horshack from Welcome Back Carter, you know. So I get up there. And what they never told me is, before anything, she pantses you on stage. Pulls your pants right down to your ankle, which would have queered the deal completely for me, because my penis has no stage presence on its best day, much, much less in front of 30 screaming Marines. It's like I just come out of a cold pool, you know? And, I'm, and she acts like she's blowing me, which she isn't. But she acts like it. She's down with her hair. So it looks like I can't even get wood where, you know, the, the suck start helper here. And I'm humiliated. And I'm laying there, you know, and I'm craving banana at this point. You know, I'm salivating for the banana just to get me off the fucking stage. I'm humiliated here. And she's showboating. She's dragging it out, you know. Da -na 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 -na. You figure after a hundred years of blowing section fruit out of the hole, you'd want to cut to the chase and go home early. But not this woman. She's giving them their money's worth. And I'm sweating my ass off. I, you know, I'm swinging an inch and a half of flaccid baby dick for the delight of 30 jar heads. I want to get the hell out of here. Finally, she stands over me to drop the banana without hitting a tooth. I remember the words exactly. Piece number one, splat! Right off my cheek, rolls across the stage collecting dust. I'm going, great, you know, every good pitcher eventually loses his throwing arm, but it's a little late to go to the bullpen at this point. Piece number two, low and away off the chin. It's like being front row at a Gallagher show. I'm like, for God's sake. I was tempted to just grab her thighs and reach up and grab the banana right from the source, but, but this woman had a vagina that would scare rats off of garbage barges. I was as close as I wanted to get. Finally... The fourth piece landed right here, large, like right in that divot in your neck there. So I just picked it up and dunked it myself. Got credit for the rebound and got the hell off the stage. So, uh, so it was pretty... Yeah, it was humiliating in a funny kind of way. Funny now. I felt sorry for her more than anything, because she's been there. She's like a, a celebrity on Okinawa. She's been there for years. The woman's like 60-something years old. Yeah, I know. And, she, and she's well-known, the banana lady. But what do you do when the parts finally stop working for you, you know? 
What happens when you get so old you finally gotta hang up your vagina? What do you do next? There's not a lot of career moves. You can go across the parking lot here, get a job at Mr. D's topless establishment. They hire anyone. First time I worked here, I went over. You know how normally you go into a topless bar, and, you know, you stick dollars in a girl's G strings, you pay too much for your drinks. It's pretty harmless. This place, it was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. For a buck and a quarter, you get a paper cup full of pellets. And the girls will lean right over the railing and eat right out of your hand. You can pet them and everything. It's the weirdest thing. The dancer's name is Chuck, if that's any indication. She walked up. Woman's like three foot tall. She had no neck. She had this belly that stuck out so the tit sat up on top of it. Drooped over the only woman I've ever seen you could titty fuck using just one tit. You just wrap it around and go. It's all you need. And the woman was poor in sweat. I mean, every time she'd move, she'd drip sweat on you. You could take dollar bills and just slap them to her belly like a refrigerator magnet. <laughs> Stick right to her. It wasn't even pornography. It was zoology. It was horrifying. Just tipping a girl in camel cash. Wow, so anyway... Yeah, so I got her back up to my hotel room. And, uh... Oh, later on, when she was beautiful. Yeah, no, that's a big bullshit myth. Alcohol does not make ugly people attractive. It just makes it so you don't give a fuck that they're ugly. That's what it does. You're ugly as shit. Now, oh, fuck you, get in the cab. <laughs> Everyone's got a story about getting drunk and waking up with some pig. No one ever talks about being the ugly one, though, you know? You ever notice that? I've been the ugly one a lot. No one ever talks about that. You know, you think you're all hot shit and stuff, and then you wake up, you're just a sweating, bloated alcoholic drooling on her pillow at 7 in the morning. You can see the look in her eye. You're the ugly one. You know it, but you don't talk about it. That's when you're telling your friends, oh, yeah, I boned this hot chick the other night. It was incredible. I called her a few times. She hasn't gotten back to me yet. I don't know what's up. <laughs> you're ugly. She's talking about you at an AA meeting somewhere. You're like, that's when I knew I'd hit my bottom. When he came back to do his laundry. <laughs> That's when I called AA. You ever drink so much of a certain type of alcohol that you get so sick you can never drink the same kind of alcohol again? I decided that's how I'm going to quit drinking. <laughs> One at a time. I'll be like 70 years old walking around with a bottle of cream de cocoa or something. <laughs> Tonight, it's Miller Lite. Last night, it was Goldschlager. You ever drink Goldschlager? Oh, that's fucking terrible. It's like schnapps, but it's got little flakes of real gold floating around in this stuff. It's, I woke up so broke, I had to pan my shit for gas money. It's very embarrassing. Oh, my gracious. You know what pisses me off in bars now are those flower girls who come out to the bars. You know what I'm talking about? Their little basket of flowers and they stalk you around. As soon as you start talking to a chick, they come jack you up to buy a flower for her, make you look like a real asshole when you won't buy one. You know? Would you like to buy a flower for the pretty little lady or don't you think she's worth four bucks, you cheap piece of shit, huh? I want to buy a flower. I want to buy a flower. I'll be in a flower store. I'm in a bar. I'm trying to get laid. Get out of here. You, know, you get a bucket of vaginas. Come over and work with me. Then you'll have something I'm looking for at least. Bought a flower for every girl whose pants I try to get into. This place will look like a mortuary. Beat it. Went skydiving recently. Has, has anyone gone skydiving? Yeah, have you? How'd you, did you go static line or free fall or? Static. Well, I, took, I, I went tandem. When you go tandem, what, what they do is they take a guy and, and they strap him onto your back on a harness. 
And he knows what he's doing. You don't have to know shit. You don't lick it up, fall out of the fucking plane. You don't have to know anything, which worked perfectly for me. But I got like halfway up in the plane and I realized the way this guy is strapped to my back in that position, if that chute doesn't open, I'll be sodomized on impact. I don't know if that's the way I want to go, you know? It made me rethink my karma, you know? I thought of every girl I ever said, well, let's just try it, and if it hurts, I'll stop. I didn't know if that come rushing back to me at ground zero. <laughs> Made it out okay, though. Why is it that if you die in a plane wreck, you get so much fucking press out of it, you know? If you're gonna die, die over 10,000 feet, because you die of an aneurysm, your liver goes bad, oh, you know it gives a shit. Die in a plane wreck, you get more press than anyone could pay for, you know? Mother Teresa had been dead, what, three weeks, a month? You don't hear another word about it. TWA Flight 800, over a year old. There's still fucking articles about it in a newspaper. You know, it pissed me off after a while with the families of the TWA victims. Didn't they get just far too whiny for their own good after a while? I mean, seriously, I've had bad days where I took it out on the wrong person, but they had press conferences every day for weeks where they just sat on the news whining, you know, we've been here for six days and they still can't identify our boy. Your fucking boy blew up over 8,000 feet with 230 other people over the ocean, for God's sake. Of course they can't identify your boy. You know who I felt bad for is that poor prick medical examiner out there in East Mauritius, Long Island, working his ass off. I mean, the guy, it's not like he had a crack forensics unit waiting around for that shit to happen. A guy, he's sitting out there, he's as busy as the Maytag repairman his whole life. All of a sudden, a garbage barge full of body parts shows up at his door. He turns into the asshole overnight. I'd have snapped like a twig if I was that guy. I can't identify your boy, can I? I've been playing Mr. Potato Head around the clock for six fucking days with your boy. You want to identify your boy? Come on in here. Does this look like your boy's spleen to you? You know? You recognize his scrot sack, you cocksucker? All the king's horses and all the king's men can't put Junior back together. You want to have a shot? Go to it, Quincy, because I fucking quit. Guy's trying to make a living. The other one was that, uh, and that little seven-year-old girl that tried to fly across country to break a record, Jessica Dubroff. The only tragedy in that story is her mother wasn't underneath the wreckage. That remorseless cunt couldn't have cared less. She's on CNN an hour after it happened, smiling, saying, my daughter died doing what she loved. She was seven years, if you have a seven-year-old that's interested in flight, buy him a balsa wood airplane and stick him in the backyard for a while, you know? You don't stick him in the cockpit, you know? You catch your kid playing doctor, you don't up and buy him a kaleidoscope and a speculum and say, have at it with the Johnson twins, honey, you ease them into the process. I mean, for God's sake, when I was seven years old, doing what I loved was sitting in the bathtub trying to turn my pecker inside out with my thumb like, a, like an extra belly button. I'd do that for days. But if I died doing it, I don't think they'd look at me like I was some kind of hero. Look at me as a kid who needed better toys. It just seems like people have kids just so they can do awful shit to them like that. I, uh, I was in uh, Idaho. I went to, you guys do any of that rodeo shit at all? Yeah? I went to, it was not like a big deal rodeo, a little small town freak show rodeo for the locals, get them out of the bar for a day. They did a thing called mutton busting. You know what, it's an actual thing where they take like six and seven year old kids, stick them on the back of a sheep, and then kick the fucking thing. It goes berserk, gets the shit out of the kid. Get me off the sheep! I don't want to be on a sheep. These sheep are rabid. You know, probably because the kid's peeing down his back at this point. But the sick thing was is their parents sat back watching the shit, laughing their asses off. They thought it was hysterical. Their kids are fighting for their lives. Their parents are all shit-faced. You know, Go on, ride that sheep like daddy taught you. Ah. Quit your crying. Be a man. But it's your daughter. Shut up. My parents were strict, but they never pit me against livestock for kicks, you know? See, when we were kids, it was called discipline. 
Now, what do they call it? Child abuse. It was discipline for us, right? Yeah, yeah. When you were a kid, if you came home late and you mouthed off to your mom, you knew what to expect, right? Your dad would take off his belt, you remember? Bind your hands behind your back with it, remember that? He'd throw you down on the ground, he'd start kicking you in the kidneys till you peed blood. Then your mom would come running in, she'd go, Harold, leave the boy alone. He'd go, do you want a piece of me, bitch? She goes scooting out the room, she's too drunk to do anything about it. Your daddy'd strip your butt naked, put cigars out on your back, you remember? He'd drag you off to a bad section of town, leave you in a urine-soaked alley to die. It was called Discipline. Now they call it child abuse. Fucking liberals. The worst thing I ever saw was in Aspen, Colorado. I saw a woman skiing with a little baby in a pouch on her chest, going straight down those fucking hills. Little tiny baby. Man, that's psychotic. I'm pro choice. You don't want to have a kid, don't have them. But don't squeeze them out and use them for a fucking airbag, all right? Where's the thinking in that? Has anyone ever been to Aspen? Beautiful place. 12,000 feet up in the air. Pass out from smoking a cigarette because there's no fucking oxygen. You get nosebleeds every day, dehydrated. Bunch of pretentious assholes who have more money than you'll ever see in your life. It's fucking torture. I spent $11 for a cheeseburger in Aspen. I, I had to ration it like a lost hiker to make it last for four days. $1.95 a gallon for gasoline, but at the same time, these pricks couldn't put a nickel's worth of sand on the fucking roads. It's ice packed. Everywhere you drive, I'm scooting all over the place. Bald tires, no insurance, no driver's license. Meanwhile, you get every little Beverly Hills GQ ski puke riding right on your ass, flashing their high beams like I want to drive 20 miles an hour. Hey, fuck you, you know? If I zip off the road into a ditch, I, I can't whip out my daddy's visa card and dial up triple a i'm a comedian I, I go off the road i'm wearing a wig and a truck stop hustling blowjobs for a bus fare <laughs> tell him i said i when you go back my ex-girlfriend, she flew out to see me out there. She's a big skier, so she calls me up. Oh, I heard you're going to be in Aspen. I'm going to come see you. I miss you so much. Fuck you, you miss me. It's amazing you never miss me when I'm jerking off in some two-nighter in Winnemucca. But oh, wait, I'm in Aspen. You're on the next plane out. I see how that works. And she's jacking me up to go skiing. I don't ski. I'm far too uncoordinated. I don't even try. It's not. I'm happy to drink and walk. You know, as as far as I push my athletic skills. She's going, no, they'll teach you to ski. Go, you remember how lousy I was in bed? I've been fucking for 15 years. That's as good as it's gotten. I'm not going to learn to ski in a day. Maybe you can find someone who knows how to ski and strap them to my back. You ever stay with someone you hate just because they look good? <laughs> Not that, but you know, the magic's gone. You have nothing in common anymore. You have nothing to talk about. But the thought of them fucking somebody else is far too excruciating, so you stick it out one more week. I hate that I'm that shallow. You know, it's going on like five months now to this kind of methadone clinic breakup where we've broken up, but she still spends it every night at my house and still calls me three times a day on the road to make sure I'm not getting laid. <laughs> Just perfect, you know, the perfect girl. Like, she was flawlessly perfect, like sickening perfect. She, you know, rich and beautiful, successful, ambitious. She, she didn't drink or smoke or do drugs. And she was kind of animals. And she recycled. She was good for the environment. She, everyone thought she was so fucking sweet. It was torture. If you ever find the perfect person, run so fast they see flames shoot out of your ass. Because all the perfect person does is amplify your flaws a thousandfold. It makes you look like that much more of an asshole, you know? I used to be a 
partier. Now I'm an alcoholic. It's all in who's judging you, you see? Find yourself someone with as many character defects as you have if you want to retain even a, a modicum of self-esteem, you know? Find yourself a, a nice manic depressive crack whore. That way you come home late, you find her cutting her wrists and blowing your mailman. Chances are she's not going to bitch about you smoking in the house, you know? You're on equal footing at that point. A year I spent with this girl, over a year, the biggest flaw I could find in her, she was occasionally late. That's not a lot of ammunition when you come home stinking drunk at 3.30 in the morning smelling like titty dancers, you know? You totaled my car! Yeah, maybe I wouldn't have if you weren't sometimes late. <laughs> you tardy bitch, how do you live with yourself? You got nothing to work with there. Even my own friends would bust my balls about it. What's she doing with you, man? She's perfect. You're a disgusting pig. I go, I know. I don't get it either. Maybe that's the attraction, yo. Know? You ever think of that? Do you ever have someone go down on you and stick their finger in your ass? You know how that's the most disgusting feeling in the world, but at the same time, it's still pretty exciting? That's just like me. I'm like a finger in the ass. You don't know if it's going to be the best orgasm of your life, you're just going to shit the bed, but it's worth the risk. All right, then. Don't groan at me. If you want something to groan at, here's the bonus track. So I told my girlfriend I wanted to fuck her between the tits. She said, how are you going to make that feel good for me? I said, right before I come, I'll stop punching you in the face. Groan at will. You didn't like that? I'm a sick fuck. Thanks. You're the first person to recognize that. Okay, we can have the heckler hour now. Y'all want to heckle at once? Go ahead, get it out of your systems. I'm not going to pick on you because you're a big, burly, mean looking fuck. I'm not going to pick on her because her boyfriend might pass out later. I might have a chance. Mouth off all you want. So I, saw, I pointed you out when you came in. I said, man, if I could have that girl just one time, I'd be like... Dead. No, I'd be like every other guy in the trailer park, but thanks for bringing it up. Okay. <laughs> I live in West Hollywood, and I live two blocks off Santa Monica Boulevard, which is a huge gay area. And uh, I was walking to a gig... It's like three blocks from my house, and I'm walking down Santa Monica, and I saw a transvestite in a wheelchair. And I'm not talking like bad knee from a football injury. I'm talking really fucked up, crippled in a wheelchair, all gimped up, and she's kicking herself with the one gimp leg at like one mile per hour down the street, coming at me. And my first thought, because I got rolled by a transvestite prostitute once in Phoenix. Has that, anyone ever been duped? No? See, when I lived in Phoenix, we used to go cruising cheap hookers on Van Buren, just uh, not buying anything. We'd just go, like, drive around and heckle them, get all liquored up, and go scream shit at them out the window. Well, uh, we were driving one night, and we, uh, we banged a U-turn on Van Buren in front of what was probably the ugliest prostitute I've ever seen in my life. So we had to slow down and look. And, uh, but as soon as we slowed down, she jumped right in the car, just opened the door, jumped right in, completely assumed the sale, and she had some, you know, frantic opening presentation where she, someone had a gun, or she had a gun, or someone was chasing her, some bullshit. All I remember, she looked at me and Matt, and she goes, I'll suck both your dicks for $15. <laughs> so when she first got in the car, we may or may not have thought it was really a guy, but... Fifteen bucks. <laughs> no, it looks like a girl to me. It looks like a girl to you, man. I think we got a lovely young lady here. Who's the? And before I could answer, she reached into my pants, pulled my dick out, and started blowing me, which is a good way to close a deal in any line of work, I think. That pretty much spells sold right there. So I gave her the fifteen bucks out of my pocket, and she took us down this whole like maze of side streets, and we got to a, a dark dead end in a residential area. And we pulled over, and we're in a Jeep. So she's blowing me. I'm sitting up on the hump, and Matt's sitting right here in the driver's seat waiting his turn. And we're just trying not to laugh, you know? 
Because anytime you're getting a blowjob that close to your best friend, your tendency is to chuckle a bit. But I have my dick in the mouth of a very ugly, angry crack whore right now. I don't want to bust up laughing, you know? I'm sure she has enough pent-up animosity towards men as it is. I don't want to be the reason she snaps and bites down, you know? So I'm just trying to be cool. I already realized I've made a big mistake and a big error in judgment. And I felt her fucking around in the back of my pants. And all I said was, what are you doing? And she goes, I didn't touch your wallet. I, go, I didn't say it. She goes, your wallet's down here on the floor. She handed me my wallet back, and there was a $50 bill that was missing. That was all that was in there. So I'm going, where's my 50 I ain't got your $50. Give me my $50. And went back and forth till she finally grabbed me by the hair and slammed me in the mat so hard. Matt went right out the driver's side of the Jeep. I picked up on the roll bar and kicked her in the head as hard as I could, and she just got pissed. <laughs> So at this point, any illusion that this is really a chick have gone right out the fucking window. The dream is over, kids. You can lose your erection. So I jumped out on the driver's side. She gets out on the passenger side, and I still had my wallet in my hand, and I don't even know why I had the balls to try it, but it was really dark, so I put my wallet up, and I go, Give me my money, or I'll blow your fucking head off. And she believed me. But she wouldn't give me my money. She I ain't got your money, which was scarier still, because at that point in my life, $50 was a lot of money to me. But if you're willing to take a bullet for 50 bucks, you win the money, hands down, imaginary or not. She believes it. And I'm hoping, like, Matt will jump in with some good cop, bad cop, help me out. Don't make him do it again. He's crazy. He kills all the hookers, you know? But Matt's just standing there. He's, like, punch drunk and retarded. Like, he just found out he's adopted. He has no idea. You know what to do and I'm running out of threats here I, I'll kill you on the count of three get in the fucking car one two finally I got Matt in the car and we hauled ass out of there and at first we're wicked pissed you know because we're completely stripped of our pride at this point so we're like, should we go back and hit her with the car should we whack her in the head with a tire jack and finally we just you know cut our losses and we drove home probably the most silent drive home of my life and we got maybe a mile from the house, and finally Matt looked over at me and he goes, ha ha, you got your dick sucked by a guy. Like, hey, fuck you, man. You waited in line to get your dick sucked by a guy. And where's my 750? So, so I'm, I'm walking down Santa Monica Boulevard to this gig, and I see the one in a wheelchair. My first thought, of course, is easy revenge right here. I can get my 50 back right now if I wanted to, but can't do that shit in L.A., you know, even if I would. You don't know who anyone is. You don't want to burn any bridges, you know. Hate to show up in an audition two weeks later, have that same transvestite in a wheelchair behind the desk going, Hey, you hit me in the head with a brick. I'm sorry. I was thinking of someone else. Maybe I should read this again with more feeling. But I'm walking, and she gets right up to me. She goes, excuse me, will you push me down to Spike? Spike is a gay bar. It's like three blocks in the opposite direction. And I was polite. I, I said, I, I'm sorry, I'm in a hurry. I didn't say I'm in a hurry to get the fuck away from you, which is what I'm thinking, but I didn't say it. And I got past, and the more I thought about it, the more I just felt like an asshole, you know? I mean, that just spoke volumes about the triumph of the human spirit right there. If I was that horribly crippled up, would I have that same zest for life that that guy does? I mean, I, this guy gets up every day of his life. He, he puts on his prettiest dress, duct tapes his dick between his ass cheeks, and gets out there and fights, damn it. I'm still hitting my snooze bar at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. This guy's been up since dawn trying to wax his own ass with a palsy hand, you know? I need to be a better person. I sit up here, I bitch about my girlfriend dump me. Jesus, this guy's glad he can still get his lips up to the glory hole. I need more ambition. Oh, the dream? Uh, you've said enough. I only have, I know what you're talking about. And that's true. I have big dick dreams. Does anyone... Because the only, you know why I ever brought this up on stage? I have dreams all the time. Well, not like every night, but it's a reoccurring theme is where I have this enormous, like, you know, three foot dick and I can blow myself. And, and uh, uh, the only reason, because I was in a, doing a show in Long Island and I leaned over to get something and the mic stand went like this and I just 
reaction. I went, wow, I've had dreams where I can do this. And my brother was in the back of the room. He starts dying laughing. So I asked him. He goes, yeah, I have dreams like that all the time. So I didn't know if it was a common thing, like showing up at work in your underwear, you know, that everyone has. <laughs> I do. I have them all the time. But I, but I can never finish. And I don't know if it's one of those things where if you come in your own mouth, you'll die, like when you're falling. I don't know if there's any myth attached. All right. I went to a, a, an adult bookstore in Portland. Have you been ever to an adult bookstore? All right, they have the big whole, whole big wall of dildos like they always have in there, the vibrators and the double dongers and pocket pussies, the whole nine yards. But this is something new I hadn't seen before. They had a big rubber fist. Seriously, they had a big $29.95. You can buy a big rubber fist. It was life-size, because I put my fist right up to it. It matched up, you know? And anytime you can match up anatomically to anything in a smut shop like that, it makes you feel pretty proud, even if it is just the fist. But, you know, I can, but I was wondering why. You know, it was funny to me, but still, you have to, why would you, even beyond the fact, why would you be into that? But if you were into that, why would you need a rubber fist? When would your own fist be inadequate, you know? When do you have fist envy? Have you ever been, like, rejected because of the size of your fist? I, what if you had two fists inside of someone and they go, it's not enough. I still feel some gaps in there. Do you have another fist you could possibly use? Maybe that's so you can, like, fist someone and still be able to defend yourself in case trouble brews. That's the best I can figure. But I like the smut shops. I'm a huge fan of pornography, but like, like the hotel porn is always that like weak, watered down, spice channel, no penetration porn, you know, it's a kind of bullshit. In Vegas, I worked the Riviera where they have, it's the first place in the States I've seen where they have actual triple X porn on the hotel room. And what you could do, you buy a single movie for $11.95, or for $17.95, you can buy the big Blocko porn, which is 24 straight hours of porno, noon to noon it runs. And I bought that, because I am a spendthrift. And, uh, and I watched, it was like 5 in the afternoon, and I watched as much as was necessary. And, uh, and then I went and I did my shows, and I came back at 4 in the morning, and I went to put it back on. But to turn it back on, you had to go through the same process of ordering it. So I called the front desk to make sure I'm not going to get double charged. And they go, oh, no, once you shut it off, you have to pay to restart it. Oh, I bought 24 hours of pornography. Who's going to sit through 24 straight hours of porno without turning it off? I'd be hamburger by the morning. I could have turned a quart of lotion into a lather by then. It looked like someone put too much soap in a washing machine all wrapped up around myself. Eight more hours. You can do it. Ow. Waste not, want not. Ow. Pass the sav. I'm killing myself here. Fuck you guys, I'm an artist, man! Yeah, right. Believe me, people come to see my act to see art about as much as I go to a titty bar to appreciate dance. No art involved in this act. That's the way I keep it. I gotta get the hell out of here, but you know, I just, you know, I, I cringe every time I'm referred to as an artist because most of what is supposedly art, I don't fucking get. You know? It makes me feel like a loser. If there was a Rembrandt on one wall and a, a black velvet Elvis on the other wall, I don't really know the difference. They're just paintings to me, you know? Well, why is it like the Venus de Milo is art, but the fat kid out in front of big boys' restaurants, he's an eyesore. They're both statues. How do you know the Venus de Milo didn't used to have an arm with a big plate of spaghetti in it? You don't know that, but I live in L.A. and I mean, it's so loaded down with all those, you know, coffee shop artists, douchebags with the berets and the goatees, you know, sitting around reading Kafka with a cappuccino. I've tried to fit into that circle, and I've failed miserably. I mean, I've gone. I've gone to plays. I've gone to museums. I don't get it. I've actually read Kafka. Has anyone ever read anything by Kafka? I read this book called The Metamorphosis because I was going out with this chick who kept making references to, oh, that's really Kafka-esque. So I read this book trying to get into her pants. It's 60 pages long about a guy who turns into a bug. And it's pretty plain and simple. They spell it out. It's not a hard read. But at the end of the book, they had 120 pages called Explanatory Notes to the Text. 
where all these scholars tell you what Kafka really meant by the guy turning. When Kafka referred to the metamorphosis, he was really referring to a transfiguration of an abortive Christ figure. Oh, I thought it was a guy who turned into a bug. I'm the dick again, you know? That's why I don't want to be known as an artist. I, I don't want a hundred years from now some scholar sitting around going, you know, when Doug Stanhope referred to the uh, bucket of vaginas, what he really meant was the adolescent's longing to return to the womb and its maternal enveloping. No, it was about a big sloppy bucket of snatch. It's just a fucking joke. I'm just trying to have a good time. Thank you guys very much. Enjoy yourselves.